Hi, my name's Cathy Millett and this week I'm taking this diorama that I started four years ago and I'm repainting the walls. So why am I repainting the walls? Well, it's a beautiful diorama and a lot of people like the walls. I just think they're a bit yellow and I wanted a yellow stone effect. But when I look at all the photos, actually they're more grey with time and the mortar's lighter than the colour here. I don't like the brown mortar. So I'm going to take this opportunity while I've got it down, I need to fix some other items on it before I get on with it, to repaint the walls. But rather than show you on this, which is incredibly unwieldy, I'm going to show you on these few smaller pieces instead. So these are just, they were painted, they had kind of a brown wash put on them. And I don't want to start again from scratch and I already have doors and windows in now. So what I want to do is just be able to glaze over the top in a series of colours. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now you might be thinking, when will I ever need to repaint a wall? To be honest, I find I can do it quite frequently. I build something, I do it, and you get carried up in the rush, you paint it, you get on to the next stage, and you come back a week or two later, in this case four years later, and you look at it and you go, yeah, it's not quite right. Or you might have bought a ready-made building. There's some amazing ready-made buildings out there now but they can look a little bland and they're just a bit meh. So it's good to have this as a trick up your sleeve to be able to paint things and just change them slightly without having to wholesale paint the underlying colour again from scratch. So I'm basically going to use three colours now and they're Vallejo colours. I've got a blue-grey pale, which is going to be my pale grey and I've got black grey, which is my favourite Vallejo colour. And then I've got a dark sand that I'm going to put into the mortar washes just to lighten them up a bit. So I'm going to start with um, that first because it's going to be the brightest colour and I will want it to tone down. So I'm just going to shake it, squeeze a little bit out. And then I'm going to add a couple of drops of flow improver so it will flow. And this is just Windsor & Newton flow improver for just a couple of drops. And then we need to do the little flow test. I think that's still a bit too thick. Um, I want it to colour them, I don't want to have to put a lot in, but I don't want it to be too thick because I'm going to be putting on vertical walls in a minute. So first of all, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to run it into these gaps and it should just run along. But in this instance, it's not quite flowing enough. And partly one of the problems is acrylic will never flow as well as um, your kind of enamels. But because I want to paint this quite quickly, I don't want to wait the few days that enamels will take to dry. I'm kind of cheating a bit. Now if we want to apply that to a vertical building, this is when we need it to be just a little bit more thick, which is why this should work better than an enamel. So you can tip it on its side to paint it, but pretty soon you're going to put it vertical, and at which point you don't want it all flowing down to the bottom. This building came with the kit and I just didn't use it. So I always make all the kit buildings up, so when I need one in a rush, I can just plunk it on a diorama or a, well, whatever I want to plunk it onto. And the bit to be careful around is these windows because they do not want to get coloured at this point. They're white and I want them to stay that way. So now we're on to doing the grey. And um, it took me a couple of hours to get all this lot painted and the mortar lines are done. Um, but what I need to do now is just go over here with a bit of a grey and these, these look quite bright sometimes the mortar lines are some of these, especially these particular rougher stone walls, but that will all tone down in time. Now I won't bore you with how long it took me to mix this grey, but it's a mix of the black grey, which is one of my favourite colours, it's kind of an off black, and the white. And I mixed and I mixed and I added more flow improver, and more thinner and it went too dark too light. But this is the final colour I got. And I dry brushed it on. I took most of the paint off on a paper towel and then just dry brushed it over the walls because I'm not looking to get rid of all the tones underneath. I'm just looking to turn them a little bit more grey. And it is important that it's thin. It's only a glaze, which is why I keep adding water to this because it just strikes me as a little bit too thick all the time. So, there we go. A lot more grey straight away. And before you say the mortar looks wrong, don't worry, that's going to be the next coat. So now our stonework's the right colour. I can just see that beautiful um, yellow coming through that I did like. It just was too there. 
Um, and now we're just going to add in something to knock everything back with a different colour grey that goes everywhere, including the mortar lines that just look a bit bright at the moment. So for that, I'm going to use this kind of medium blue-grey pale, it's a Vallejo colour, and I'm going to make it very thin and dilute. I want it to stain it rather than um, hide anything underneath. Um, you know, I want everything still to come through. So there we go, it's just a mix. And what I'm going to do is um, not dry brush it this time, but not put it on really thickly. So I'm just going to take a bit off the brush. So if I put this on, I can spread this across the whole lot and it won't sit too heavily on one area. Now, of course, the problem is most of my walls that I'm doing on the big one are vertical. So I just need to make sure that um, this will sit in those vertical areas okay. And don't worry, it does dry a lot darker. Let's do the edges. So these have dried and they lost just a little bit of depth. And the easiest way to add that back is put another wash on. Yes, I know another wash. So I'm just going to take the dark wash. And this time I've got some white spirit and I'm just going to brush it on with a fairly clean brush just so that everything's more or less soaked. And then I want to almost dry brush the wash onto the bricks. So I don't really want it on my mortar lines. So I just take a little bit from the lid and just do it sideways. And I try not to get too much on my mortar lines and I just put it onto the surfaces. Easier said than done I know but it works and if you get it in your mortar lines you can just brush it out easily enough and I often go through and just do that. And I mean, don't want them to be totally pale they do need a bit of dark in them as well just to set them but there we go just let that dry. So here's the final result. Actually, this is what we started with. Dark mortar lines, quite a yellow stone. Not really exciting me that much and something I wanted to get rid of. But this is what you get when you take that kind of colouring and you just apply a couple of glazes of grey, a little bit of work in the mortar lines, which I did hand paint, and then just a wash to bring out some of those darker details. And overall, I'm really pleased how the result came out. I wasn't expecting, if I'm honest, for it to be this easy to take that building and changing it into something more realistic. So there we go, final picture, very happy.